Hi, it's Clark. And Emily. On Sailing Vessel Temptress. It is July 2019, and today we are talking about all the stuff that we've bought so far for our sailboat refit this year during hurricane season so that we can go off and spend the next uh, trip in Central and South America. We're going to talk about what it costs, what we bought, and uh, how we're preparing everything. As you know, we're a sailing channel. We do things a little differently. We try to show you what the life is really like. Part of the life is the expenses. So we're gonna talk about the money. Um, we just spent a whole bunch of it and we're gonna spend a lot more this summer getting the boat ready for like the next five years of cruising. Mm -hmm. Normally, uh, every month we sit down and we talk about our ongoing living expenses. Those are between about $500 and $1,000 every month. If you're interested in those expenses, check out our adventure logs. We'll put a link right up there. Uh, so you can click on it and see our, our regular expenses every month. From time to time we do a major boat refit and that costs more than that month to month price. Absolutely. Uh, that's what we're about to do now. One time purchases that we have to do every few years. Mm -hmm. And we don't do much for Christmas or for our birthdays which all fall in December so we're splurging this time of year. So you've heard of Christmas in July. Well this is our Christmas in July so we're opening all of our presents here with you today. Our goal is to prep the boat for the next three to five years. We'll be sailing from Florida down to Central and South America and our purchase this summer will include uh, stuff we need for major boat projects and upgrades, uh, regular boat maintenance things because <laughs> things broke, spare parts because things, other things will we'll break, break. <laughs> uh, toys and other stuff for living on the boat, and lastly a new category cameras and uh, recording equipment for YouTube. We've collected a boatload of stuff <laughs> and there is more stuff coming mm -hmm. uh, but we gotta start working we gotta get some projects done so we are gonna open all our presents and show you what's inside uh, we're gonna tally it up and see what it has costed us so far and at the end we'll talk a little bit about what else is coming and what the number one thing is that we're looking forward to to uh, adding to our boat this year. Before we begin, just FYI, nothing on this table has been given to us. None of it is the result of a sponsorship. This is all stuff we bought ourselves because it was the right stuff for us. But we just want to show you the types of things we want and we need on our boat. I want to start with what I know is in this box, camera equipment. So we can do the rest of the video with the new camera. Lumex G85. That should make a life a lot easier, mostly because it has a screen, we can see what's going on, uh, and because it isn't going to be failing every other time we use it. It came with a uh, 12 to 60 zoom and a 45 to 200 zoom. Uh, this will be more for photography, I imagine, outside stuff. This will be our working lens. We have this beauty here, and this will uh, let us. Uh, illuminate the scene without having to rig the difficult lights. And we have this. It's a shotgun mic that'll go on top of the camera and this should make life easier. In just a minute you're going to hear and see how all this works. Now doesn't that look better? Uh, we want to really thank our Patreons, uh, particularly Chris G. He made a strong contribution towards all this. We took all the Patreon money and we're putting it into photo equipment and sound equipment and uh, so we can do this whole YouTube thing better. We're not going to unbox each of these things individually, don't worry. We're just going to do them all at once and then we'll go through piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. Here we go. something. Okay. Okay, this is a starter for a Yanmar. Uh, they're really pretty cheap. Here's the thing about Yanmars. Buy spare starters. They're crap. They're just really, really bad. So, you need a bunch of them. This is Dyneema line. Um, 
It's really crazy strong, and we're going to use it as the dinghy's anchor line and uh, its painter because it floats. So this is about better than polypropylene, and it's not terribly expensive. Hey, this is supposed to be a good little saw. I can't tell you how many times we're out there and we need to process firewood for a beach party, and uh, it's really hard to do without a nice little saw. <laughs> Thank you, Vanna. The camera kit came with this little cute backpack, but it's got little sections in it. It's going to be great for uh, the cameras. It opens from the side. You can open it from the side and do a little quick draw and pull out. So it's paper now. And pull out your SLR. And it's got room for lenses and everything inside. Tripod. Card reader. Uh, spare battery. Uh, some lens covers. Lens covers. It came with a flash. I doubt we'll really use that. We're more video people. It's like a wide angle telephoto adapter. I don't expect much to work from that. Really good extra lens that'll meet certain needs that we will have. It's a device just to split a USB line <coughs> so we can edit, have lots of hard drives plugged in. HDMI cable, lens cleaning kit. That's it. Better shape. Oh, it's a gray card. <laughs> and folds right up so we can take it everywhere and the idea is when the camera sees this we get it in the editor and then we can do color balancing in one shot bring all the cameras together something to read the memory cards from the cameras a camera strap camera strap and a battery charger battery charger all right is that the camera stuff done i think so we are going to be traveling a lot and we're doing a new thing to solve our data. Since we're going to change countries all the time, we decided to go with the Google Fi. Uh, so we got a new phone that will talk to all the different radios that Google Fi works with. And it's actually not in the box now. The box is empty because we're using it and it's working great. What do you okay. want to do next? You pick things you know and talk about Okay. Them. Binoculars! <laughs> or as our little friend Jay calls them, binoculars. All the binoculars on our boat were screwed up in some way. Well, both of them. We had two young boys on the boat this weekend or last weekend, and they gave them to the kids. They kind of sort of functioned, but the kids love them. Of course, they call them binoculars. But now we have new binoculars. <laughs> and we've got, I'm very excited about um, this. This is a set of plans for my Eastport, my Eastport nesting cram, which is going to be on uh, my sailing dinghy. Uh, thank you to the Eastport uh, company or the Chesapeake Lifecraft company for sending to these to us. These are free. Yeah, this is the one exception. We did get a, um, a support from them. They would like us to build their dinghy, so they gave us free plans. Free plans for the Eastport nesting dinghy. And a bunch of stuff like dust masks and tape and sea clamps. We're going to need a lot of sea clamps for making that dinghy. More sea clamps. I think we're going to need 30 sea clamps. Mm -hmm. um, more painter's tape. These are kind of sandpaper. Sandpaper. Chip brushes. Lots of epoxy work. Buy them in bulk. Harbor Freight's our favorite place to go. <laughs> Uh, these are jumbo aluminum carabiner hooks with a grip on them. These I'm going to use when we go grocery shopping and we have a ton of reusable bags. They cut into your hands when you carry them. So now we have two handles to carry our groceries with. These were from Harper Freight. Very, very inexpensive. This we're actually pretty happy with and it's the one, it's free. Uh, I gave blood and this week they're giving out really great uh, coolers. We always need a cooler like this. You need a cooler when you travel because when you go to the grocery store, it's sometimes a very long walk on a very hot day to get back to the boat's refrigeration. And this will keep your dairy products and stuff and your meats from going bad. This failed on us during the trip and we're kind of jerry-rigged right now. But this is the big switch that uh, turns the windlass on, arms the windlass so that we can raise the anchor. Oh, yeah, I recognize that switch now. Big, massive switch. And it failed, but it's 50 years old. So, time for a new one. Bullet connectors for electrical connections. I like bullet connectors. A bunch of screws. 
just uh, stainless steel screws and another bunch of screws, computer fans, waterproof ones, the little gaskets that go in a garden hose. Um, but we use garden hose fittings on our hookah, so these are for our hookah. Dyneema again, uh, the Spectra stuff. These are gloves made out of Dyneema and they're sold for chefs to be uh, cut resistant. Well, I always got my hands cut up and even leather gloves cut up with barnacles. And someone recommended these. They're very inexpensive and I'm going to use them while I'm scrubbing the bottom in a barnacle area. My hookah regulators are old and they're just not working very well. So I decided to buy these. Uh, hope they work out well. Um, they were very inexpensive. Two hookah regulators. We have a bathroom scale. Ours broke. This one is not digital. It will not break. So we'll know how much we weigh. Yep. This is... How we dry our laundry on the boat. I call it the underwear chandelier. <laughs> but it folds up and goes in a cupboard and it stores really nice and flat. The this other one broke. Really great. I bought one in 99 in... Uh, Chinatown in San Francisco, and it just broke, and it's really been a great thing to have. Ooh! Ah, our favorite roach paste. This is bug insurance. <laughs> this is a Max Force uh, gel. We highly recommend it. We put it down every six months on the boat, and it keeps roaches at bay. Uh, if you're on a boat, get some, because if you don't need it, somebody else will at some point. A uh, bunch of switches. You never know when you need a switch. I tend to buy double pull, double throw, 20 amp switches because you can use them for virtually anything. And little waterproof boots. So they go over the switch and you screw down, so it kind of makes the, the switch waterproof. It's worthwhile to have them for outside switches, but also we've got a bunch that are very near the galley and when dishes are done exuberantly, <laughs> it's better to do that. Uh, these are really cool. They're like $3. They're industrial thermostats. And I've used them in all kinds of places. So I have a whole bunch of them to take with us next time. Uh, they basically turn something on when it either gets hot or cold. So you can use it uh, in a fridge or you can turn on a fan when a piece of electronics gets too hot. Speaking of hot or cold, these are new oven thermometers so we can bake bread. This is a, it's called a voltage sensitive relay. Uh, it's industrial stuff. It's really inexpensive. Now they sell the same darn thing at like West Marine for well over $100. And uh, this is just the same thing. So uh, I've used these before in the boat and this one will uh, be used between the engine starting battery and the main batteries, uh, the house batteries. And when either of them is getting a charge from whatever reason, it brings them together so they all share the wealth. Mm -hmm. Speaking of batteries, what's behind you? Oh, yeah. For our grand prize. <laughs> we are putting two 300-watt solar panels on top of all our other solar panels. And to do that, I have to build a structure. And to build a structure, I have finally gotten a good excuse to buy welding equipment. So, I bought this. It is a Weld Pro 200G, oh, there it is, 200GD. Uh, I'll find out tomorrow morning uh, whether it works or not. And a welding helmet, and gloves, and sleeves, and lots of other safety stuff that's around here somewhere. And just pick up a bottle of Argon today. We've. Uh, that's like the Red Rider BB gun of your Christmas. <laughs> it is. All my life, since I was a little. I, I, was, I welded when I was like 14 once. I loved it. Um, I've never had a reason to buy a welder, and I decided this is the reason to buy a welder. And the biggest reason was I wanted a welder. So now I can weld, and this guy can do AC welding so I can weld aluminum and stainless steel, which is what this project's going to require. We've got two big fuel cans. Mm -hmm. We use these on the yacht to hold uh, six gallons each, so 12 gallons of gas, and then I transfer this into the dinghy smaller container, um, and this system has worked well for me. These seem to be really good cans. I used them last season, but um, a friend needed them really badly, so I decided since I was coming back, I can buy new ones. Okay, well, we talked about solar. So this is the regulator for the solar. I am not convinced this is the right one, and I'm gonna need multiple regulators, so I'm buying another type, and uh, I'll compare them later. 
This is the Lonely Planet Guide to Columbia. We're going to Columbia next year. Um, LED lights, these will go up on the spreaders. They illuminate the deck, make it like daylight when we need it to be. Uh, when you need to deal with sails and stuff, or it's really good, hit these switches and the boat just glows. If there's a ship around that doesn't see you, they'll probably see you. Or just butt connectors, crimp connectors for hooking wires together. Safety glasses. Uh, this is on the idea of things that might fail. It's a continuous duty solenoid. And uh, this is what makes the windlass go. Little switch makes the big switch push the amps to raise the anchor. And they fail every five or six years. So I like to have a pair of spares. Mm -hmm. Light. Oh, I bought Emily an uh, antique uh, crystal door handle for one of the head doors. Yes, or one of our glass doorknobs is a little chipped. Fancy schmancy. <laughs> Ooh la la. Antique. Some LED light bulbs. Nothing fancy there. And some big lights. These are for nav station, galley, and saloon, I think. Yep, and so we have three of them. If they work out like they're supposed to, they're kind of cool. They've got dimmers and various things. Mm -hmm. And they give refrigeration stuff. Okay. Well, this is refrigeration stuff. Uh, the, it's a, a halon leak detector. It works with fluorocarbon. So when you have a refrigeration and you have a little leak, this thing can smell it. And it beeps kind of like a metal detector, but it's sniffing. Uh, my old one failed. Just the batteries leaked all inside it. So that'll be handy to have. Uh, more lights? More lights. More LED lights. A uh, new swim ladder. Can I open it? Sure. Just don't think Let's open table. it together. <laughs> I had one very much like this. And so the boat's all set up to handle one. And Temptress got tangled up in a tornado. And uh, about the biggest damage was it bent the hell out of this thing. So we're replacing it with a new one. We're done. <laughs> These are called water hammocks. And you open this up, I guess you can see the picture, you inflate it. It's really quite nice when it's hot because you're supported, it's supported down in the water. So you get the cooling effect of the water. And they pop open really cool. Pop open. Yep. So this inflates into a little pillow. I've had one for quite a while. Uh, the, the wire on the outside corroded up and failed. Anyway, we've got two now so you don't have to fight over it. Emily, what's the big green thing over here? What's the big roll? Oh, I think this is the last thing. I think it's the last. Ah, it's heavy. This is our new cockpit flooring. We're going to have a yard <laughs> on the boat. Uh, the cork in the cockpit has failed after, what? 20 years? Yeah. About 20 years? Maybe even more. Um, and we found this green rug on the beach two years ago. Uh -huh. And we salvaged it, we put it on the boat, and it got me thinking, what if we had grass in the cockpit? <laughs> we could have a yard, uh -huh. we wouldn't have to mow it, and we could lie in the grass. I've and, never uh, seen another boat with grass in the cockpit. But yeah. We're going to have grass in the cockpit, and the number one rule will be no, no dogs, dogs allowed. <laughs> So that's our that's our turf, and it looks it looks a lot like real grass. I think we're gonna like it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. We don't usually use air conditioning, but in Florida, working hard on the boat, we're gonna need some help. So this is just a 6,000 BTU window unit air conditioner. We we'll put it in a hatch. Got a little generator on the boat, and once I get these solar panels hooked up, I should be able to run that off an inverter. So. We're going to have a cool place to work and a cool place to sleep, hopefully. Let's put it on the, the boat renovation budget. Yeah, it's definitely a maintenance item because we without couldn't work this, without it. Would get done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so far on land, we've spent $869 on video equipment. Major upgrades to the boat, including the welder, cost just over $2,000. We spent $425 on things to repair and maintain the boat. Another $470 on items for living on the boat, including Emily's sailing dinghy, and $223 in spare parts. For a total so far of 
$97. That's what we've purchased so far. Uh, we keep you guys up to date on our monthly expenses every month, and a lot of you say, wow, that life is uh, so reasonable, and it looks like something that's attainable. <coughs> we wanted to make sure you knew about these one-time bigger expenses. Mm -hmm. Some of them we need. Some of them are like repairs and upgrades. Some of them are nice to have stuff, but that's kind of a, a good sampling of what we are yeah. planning to buy this year. Um, there is more stuff coming, and mm -hmm. I think we're thinking it's going to be about 10000 by all the together. end of the year all together. Yeah. That includes a new dinghy, new motor, um, all kinds of other stuff. So that's what we're anticipating for the year. Mm -hmm. um, and now on to our number one most anticipated purchase. But first, <laughs> um, if you're interested in what it really costs for us to live this life in an affordable um, intentional way, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell icon. You'll get those monthly updates about what we're spending. You'll get other videos about DIY stuff that helps us live this kind of life in a frugal way. And we're going to do a yearly uh, budget update also. So we're going to talk about this, our monthly expenses and everything else, provisioning all mm -hmm. in what it's going to cost uh, for us to live this life this year. Um, without further ado, What's the number one most anticipated thing this year, Clark? Okay, the number one thing I'm looking forward to, or we're looking forward to, is a new anchor and chain. Um, I've had this primary anchor for a long time, and I swear it was always a good anchor. I've kind of decided to replace it with a modern anchor, and I think it's, it stops it's rebelling. It is dragging so much. You've we, probably seen some of our dragging videos. You've yeah. probably seen the video that Clark did about anchors, all the different types and the strengths and weaknesses of each. It's mm -hmm. time for us to get a new anchor. Yeah, so we're going to get a modern anchor and the chain just needs replacing. It's starting to get rusty. Mm -hmm. But in order to figure out what kind, you're going to have to stay tuned because we're still deliberating a little bit and uh -huh. there might be something special to announce coming up soon. It will be a modern anchor though. Uh, and we look forward to sharing that with you soon. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you all for uh, watching this video and watching all our videos and liking and commenting and sharing your stories and your questions so that we can continue to make videos. Thank you to all those people who supported us on Patreon this year so we can get this new camera uh -huh. and a little bit just keep getting better on video. Thanks for watching us open all our presents. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> We forgot the mistletoe. We did. And the eggnog. No, the eggnog.